Hello everyone and welcome to Summer Lake episode 1, a brand new project here on my channel in Planet Zoo and if you are looking for a very Disney-ish inspired zoo, this is the series to watch. This is going to be way over the top and this is going to be very very fantasy-ish inspired and it's gonna be, well, actually we spare no expense, okay? Let's put it that way. It's going to be a lake designed zoo which has 10 different areas which are all um, done a little bit like uh, in Epcot where you do have every area um, re-sampling um, one country and this is the same idea we are going to tackle in this zoo but today but first of all we are going to build the entrance building and the central piece of the zoo which is going to be a tree and for those of you who do know Disney's Animal Kingdom they might already have an idea what kind of tree that is I mean you've seen it from the thumbnail potentially already glimpsing through but I am incredibly proud of what I've done here today. Um, it's going to be a fairly long uh, time lapse and I sped it up by 10 times. So I'm, I was trying to find the middle ground uh, between, yeah, between those people who like fairly quick uh, time lapses and those who cannot stand too quick time lapses. So I would have loved to go to like 12, 13 times, but honestly though, this is going to be too ridiculous and looks really, really bad. Now, um, that said, I can already tell you that this tree over here really cost me a lot of patience and I did cut away mainly the first six attempts that went wrong. Um, <laughs> and as you can see, this is not done entirely with a rotation trick. It's more or less done by hand entirely. And uh, the, the idea was, following the um, tree of life in Animal Kingdom, building something similar but not yet quite the same. Now this uh, tree in um, Animal Kingdom is fairly inspired by a baobab, a baobab tree, I don't know how exactly you pronounce that African tree, um, which uh, is a little bit more chunky and actually a little bit more wide and thick. While I wanted to have a bit of a thinner tree that goes a tiny bit taller um, to the top, so representing a, a little bit more like an, yeah, fairly, fairly over-exaggerated oak tree, I guess. And I still wanted to go and do this wonderful animal texture on it. So for those of you who don't know, the Animal Kingdom in uh, Florida, the Disney park, has a tree of life. And from the distance, it does look like a tree. While you go closer, you see that all the textures and all the all the kind of wood is actually animals um, glued together out of wooden animals. And if you've seen the Imagineering story, um, you will definitely notice that uh, this is um, all made uh, possible by very, very experienced and very talented uh, wood artists, like they have done all these um, little statues and stuff exactly for this tree and like thousands of those animals uh, went together to create that tree and those trunks and it's just looking absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it, there is there is basically no, no reason um, uh, to do something else because it's just so beautiful. And you can actually tell from what I've been trying here, I was trying different styles and unfortunately though, um, we have some really great wooden animal statues in the game, um, but unfortunately just a few different species, while we have a lot of different uh, animal statues from different uh, sorts, like some of them are stone, some of them are marble, some of them are wood, some of them are like plastic and stuff like that, and unfortunately also not all of them are recallable. So yeah, I needed to find a middle ground and um, try to glue them all together, so I, at the end, used only those animals that um, or those statues that were um, flexi color so I could at least um, make them somewhat nice looking and similar looking and um, yeah then I moved on making this tree finally look like a freaking tree and even though it looks fairly seamless and straightforward what I'm doing over here I can tell you I had a few iterations going on before I knew how exactly to do it um, but still, it cost me a lot of time, and as you can see, I was I was trying different things here and there to make sure that this um, all looks good and uh, yeah, just kind of delivers the look I wanted to have. We will see this later on in the real time part. Um, I will go a little bit closer, and you will be able to catch the details a bit better. But for now, let's talk a little bit more about um, what is happening with the overall project itself. Um, so as I said, it's gonna be a mixture out of the wonderful Tree of Life-ish design in the center and a very, very Disney-ish approach. So 
Uh, the idea about the lake is taken from Epcot, and again, for those of you who don't know, Epcot is one of the Disney parks. Um, it is um, a translation, or basically it's an abbreviation, of Experimental Prototype City of Tomorrow. So the idea was, um, actually initially, but it's a little bit of a Disney history lesson, initially um, this was a project for indeed a real city, like Walt Disney himself imagined a self-sustainable city that is um, divided into three layers, actually, so the lowest layer is for for, um, delivery and um, kind of, uh, yeah, just um, the, the, actually the economy, uh, transport and stuff like that. Um, the second layer was for private traffic, like cars and uh, stuff like that. And the um, top layer, like the one that you can actually see um, in, in daylight, which is not in the tunnel, was the transit area for pedestrians. Um, and it was mainly inspired by a circular design um, going from a very central focal point. Disney in general was a big fan of having something um, very, very, very obvious in the center of a certain park, city, whatever you want to call it. And then um, he would assemble parts of the city around, so some uh, districts for people to buy for shopping and stuff. And then uh, you would also have some living districts and some parks in between, um, all divided into kind kind of pizza slice ish chunks um, <clears throat> that you would see all across that one. And so this circular approach um, was unfortunately never realized due to all the death of Walt Disney himself. And um, yeah, when, when Disney passed away years later, the Imagineers took over his idea and converted that into a theme park. And one of the um, one of the ideas they uh, converted into <coughs> the the Lake of Nations uh, was the idea of the circular design being able to go through different districts. But rather than having districts on its own, um, the creators of Disney decided to go with different countries of the world. So if you are in Epcot and you go to the Lake of Nations. Um, while you go around that lake, you uh, do visit um, some very unique um, lang uh, lang languages, I want to say, uh, countries of the world. So you can actually go from Germany uh, just over to Japan. From Japan, you visit New Zealand. And from New Zealand, you go over to China and stuff like that. Um, and each of those little areas has its own flavor, its own food, its own design and architecture, which is really cool. And this is basically the idea about this lake. So we will have 10 chunks around that lake, which um, is all coming back from this main street. We are just starting over here. Um, and you can go around that lake and visit different countries. So as of now, I won't tell you, obviously, which kind of uh, countries these are. I do already have a plan in mind. Um, that said, it's not completely set in stone. So in case you have some ideas which kind of countries you would love to see, um, please let me know in the comments down below what kind of uh, countries you would love to see in architectural styles uh, you will see. There is, of, uh, of course, one already I'm going to start to do for uh, Wednesday. I really do hope that I will be able to do Wednesday. But um, yeah, that's going to be the first one. And yeah, just in general, the approach is, again, very Disney-ish. So we are not going to make like super functional and super... Um, barebone basic zoo styled habitats that's not the target um, it's really the idea to make sure that we build a zoo that would be the the full disney experience while not with kind of attractions and rides but rather with animals so uh, just talking a little bit more about animal kingdom uh, the safari ride in animal kingdom is a little bit of a different story so uh, the, the great thing about this is the the overall nature and the overall safari experience feels very natural. They created this all in a way that the nature seems to be uh, wider than it actually is with some tricks, how they um, created the grass patterns and how they actually, it's really cool to understand how they used bushes and different tones of green um, to create a bigger depth into the fields so that these fields and uh, savanna area in the savanna looks way larger than it actually is. So they play also, false perspective is a big part of Disney, in general, the company Disney's approach of doing stuff. Um, and Hence, this safari is more or less like a natural experience. I don't want to do it exactly this way. I would love to get into an approach that Disney hasn't done yet. I want to make a zoo with some architectural styles and some experiences um, that are going a lot more into the magical and fantasy-ish approach of Disney. Um, so really trying to bring in a full immersion for the people um, rather than just have a wonderful, nice looking habitat. Um, but still, the challenge will be, I want to make sure that these habitats are 
in terms of the game and in terms of the animal itself functioning and realistic so i'm not going to make like super exotic non-functional habitats that you would never see in real life i will try at least um to get out the maximum uh, functionality while maintaining the disney vibe so it's gonna be quite challenging and i won't do any promises how quick and how long the series will take so my main goal is to do each episode one habitat and then we will have definitely one or two episodes for the main street itself and one or two episodes finishing it off so i think realistically i want to be done at the end of summer so talking about september october uh, before we move into something else and on the road i will leave myself some some space for potential dlcs so i will definitely go back to yosemite during this summer lake project but the focus will shift a little bit you know the focus will be a bit more on this new project and honestly speaking i really needed that i wanted to you know flex my my creative and architectural muscles a bit more um since to be fair the the other stuff you know yosemite and stuff the, the amazing it is, it, it still got a little bit more um, repetitive in the architectural style. I'm not even talking about the creative approach on it, on the uh, the ideas that go into it. Um, this is still fairly creative, but <clears throat> you know there is only so much you can do with a theme and a theme set in stone because Yosemite Valley is Yosemite Valley, and I wanted to keep it to the architectural style that you would find there and so there's no room for building a crazy let's say indian indian market or whatever okay it's not going to be possible um but yeah in, in general um i just wanted to give myself the chance to do this and also hopefully boost your guys interaction again because um, the last couple of weeks experienced a huge plummet in um, interest into Planet Zoo in general. I'm not talking about my channel, I'm just talking about the general interest of Planet Zoo. I think people are desperately waiting for a DLC and for some odd reasons, it seems there won't be a dumber, a dumber, what, a summer DLC. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to just merge these two things into one word already. So for, for the future, the dumber is already the summer DLC, okay? so keep that in mind um, because that's a very clever new word no I'm just kidding um but it you know signs are not that great because if there was the normal rhythm of frontier we would have gotten already information uh, about the potential new DLC because we are already in July um, and you know if you look back at the history of frontier at least this coming Tuesday there need to be any news um, or some news um, and if not I'm quite sure that we might need to wait a little bit longer but that said I'm also hoping, I'm really desperately hoping um, that Frontier takes maybe a bit more time to deliver a very meaningful and great next DLC. Potentially the criticism of, of some people reached them uh, and they decided to yeah maybe invest a bit more time into fletching out the next DLC, like a little bit more bigger one, maybe with some more changes, some more interesting new animals rather than, you know, just the same species, just... I don't want to call it reskinned, but in a way, um, just taking the same rigs and same animations and stuff. So that said, I, I love the, the South America DLC a lot. I thought it was really great, but I, I know that a lot of people want something more different and new and unique. So um, I really do hope that Frontier goes that road and uh, gives us... If it's a bit later, I'm fine with it as long as it's really getting a new hype wave going and brings people back to this wonderful game. Because again, I'm still a huge fan of that game. I'm just just hoping that there will be some new, meaningful, cool stuff. You know, that's it. And th I, this is also the reason why I started this project to, yeah, kind of lose myself a little bit and, and just, you know, get myself a little bit off that uh, stream of DLCs. You know, the, there is a danger in... Um, in setting up your content towards these kind of DLCs in general, um, let alone being on one game solely at the moment, even though I have some other projects, but they're not as big. Um, as you guys may know, the result of City Skylands floating somewhere around my channel. Um, I'll be speaking about that in a next episode, I guess, or in a future episode of hopefully Planet uh, City Skylands, but I'm... It's <clears throat> really hard to speak about this and not being completely furious, so I leave that out of this very positive episode today. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of dangerous to set yourself up to a DLC release plan of a company you cannot control yourself. And so this is why I want to free myself here from the um, the urge to have some DLCs and stuff. So uh, yeah, this Summer Lake project hopefully gives you guys some more interest and some more 
fantasy, some more inspiration for your own builds and uh, yeah, it just gives you a little bit of a different uh, view on the game because as I figured, not that many people have been building Disney-ish zoo style things. Um, I think the one person I want to point out here maybe with the coolest builds in that kind of sense is Sylph. So his, his, Sylph, his typical Sylph zoo builds at the beginning um, were maybe the most Disney inspired things are like let's say Victorian architecture inspired things he did sometimes but also his Japanese stuff was very nice and like very theme park-ish uh, inspired in terms of how he set the layout and stuff and um, this is kind of the road I wanted to go this is the void I wanted to fill because lately I feel like the realistic builds and the modern builds have taken over which is great because I did it as myself and I love this but you know I just wanted to move into that little corner of Victorian architecture main street style for the for the main theme and then wave in the different countries as a ground for uh, some very unique architectural um, experimental things I want to call them to just squeeze the most out of this game and the pieces and you can def definitely tell from my time lapse today and I'm I'm looking at this the first time I'm watching this the first time myself now and you can really tell from my footage today even though it's sped up a little bit more than usually um, that I'm taking a lot more time to find the right pieces to find the right color I was I was really even though I did some testing up front even in this final build I was testing a lot more than usually to really nail that architectural style that I haven't been tackling in over three years now because at the very beginning of my um, Camel Kingdom that was the last time I did this and uh, yeah I will also go back to Camel Kingdom for a little tour the ne next coming days just to just to give you comparison how much these games differ um, from each other because this game Planet Zoo has just come such a long way and is just so much better also in terms of the pieces um, than Planet Coaster, but you just kind of forget this because you don't really have that uh, immediate comparison. But now as I've, I've done this Main Street build, I did have the comparison and I was, I was completely blown away by how many possibilities I had in this game, even though I, I, had, I was fearing that I'm missing a lot of pieces that I had in Planko because Planko was meant to... Um, deliver pieces that can be used for a main street. Well, maybe not in the alphas where Sylph was using chimneys for basically everything, but uh, that's a different story. <laughs> um, but just nevertheless, it's uh, it's very cool to see how, how nice you can do it. One thing though, I need to quickly address, and you can see me using a lot of these um, letter pieces. The This is the comma piece, the smaller comma piece from the letters in Planet Zoo. And it looks absolutely fantastic as jingles. There is only one big issue, and I remember that this was already common knowledge, but I completely forgot about that, and I hate myself for this. This piece, unfortunately, has the lowest draw distance in the entire game in terms of pieces. So as soon as you move out a little bit of this build, the roof is disappearing, and that is very unfortunate. And this is also the reason why many people don't use this piece anymore. Um, but I completely forgot about that, and since it's built now, I think I will have to go with it, and I'm... The only thing I can do is actually hoping that Frontier will fix this at some point. Um, I, I think I gotta report this again just to make sure that I save some time. Uh, this is just very unfortunate. I mean, it's. It, I don't know if it's good or not, but the problem is that the draw distance is so low that if you stand at the Tree of Life in the center of the zoo and you look over to the entrance, it already has no roof. And this is... Mm, yeah. It's a bit of a problematic thing, to be honest. I'm not sure if I want to tackle this because as you can figure from the time lapse, it, it's, <laughs> it took ages until I was done. Like the, these are good four and a half hours that went only into this entrance building here. Uh, I cut out a lot of stuff even and um, yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure if I want to invest four and a half hours again to make some roof that have a better draw distance. You know what I mean? I, it's it's kind of pointless. Um, but anyways, I am, and I really hope you guys are too. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this layout and is this um, architectural style. I am fairly happy with this Victorian inspired entrance. Like, I'm really happy, <laughs> to be honest. I haven't been building that for such a long time. And all the people I sent this to in Discord, they were absolutely impressed and um, let's say surprised by the way I was going 
because they didn't expect me doing this. They didn't expect me doing Disney Victorian inspired Main Street style. And you know, I wanted to keep that a secret as long as I could. For those of you who have been in my live stream on Wednesday, they obviously know it already. But the, since there weren't that many people anyways, um, it's not like the merger to knowing that already. So I really hope that you guys are as surprised as some of the people I showed it up front. Um, let me know in the comments down below, please, if you were surprised and if this was a theme that you did expect from me. And obviously also let me know if you like it. You know, it's very important for me to know um, if you guys like it, if you if you see some potential in it and what you would just love to see, um, uh, you know, despite or like accept all the different nations, obviously. What is what would you love to see? Do you have a different idea? Is there anything I was missing? Shall we also do like... Um, there uh, In Animal Kingdom, there's also this... Um, uh, dinosaur ride. I'm not even sure how this is called again, um, but you, you do drive through the history of dinosaurs, which I also found very cool as a kid. I'm not even sure if it's even existing anymore. Um, and fun story, one thing I didn't know, I have been to Animal Kingdom in 1998. And for me, as a kid, I was eight years old, so um, for me as a kid, it was always meant to be there. But I just lately figured that I was actually... The day I was in Animal Kingdom was only the third day after opening. So actually I was one of the first persons ever to visit Animal Kingdom. And that is incredible. The only downside though, I haven't seen the Matterhorn ride and uh, was it, is it Matterhorn? No, it's, no, that's another one. What, what was the, the Nepal, the Nepal mine train coaster that they have there? Ah, uh, I don't know. Oh, it's Everest. It's Expedition Everest. That's the one. Yeah, obviously that wasn't built back then, um, which is a pity. I would have loved to be on that one too. Um, but yeah, I've been I've been one of the first few thousands people that have been to Animal Kingdom, and honestly, I I had some really crazy goosebumps um, because that day we were there. There was actually a film crew filming and these kind of scenes were in uh, the Imagineers on Disney Plus and honestly I sat here for like three hours and going frame by frame to see if I can find myself. I didn't though. If I would have, I would have included a screenshot, trust me, uh, but I haven't so uh, that's unfortunate. But it's knowing, knowing that I've been there really gave me some some incredible goosebumps and I was like, oh my god, this is just so ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I remember quite a lot of things, even though I was eight years old only, but I, I do remember quite a few things. So I'm I'm very still very impressed and very um, inspired by Disney's Animal Kingdom. Uh, I also now dig a little more deep into all the issues they had with some animal rights and stuff, but I'm very happy to see that at the end they um, they do treat the animals right and stuff like that, because at the age of, age of eight, you don't really care about that, you know? You're just impressed by animals and stuff, and you don't really care about if they if they are held in the right conditions or not. It's, you know, at eight years, you don't have the capacity in your brain to even think about that. If you do have, you're some kind of a special person, I guess, but uh, I for certain didn't. So, yeah, but I don't even, you know, I think it's not really a bad thing. Anyhow, guys, we are ending slowly the time lapse. I've been talking a lot off topic, but I really hope that helped you to understand what the main inspiration for this project is. Um, let me just quickly tell you that in the real-time part now, you will see a little bit of a progress already. Um, that will be the time-lapse of next episode and some more of it, of course. But yeah, you will definitely get some more infos now in the real-time part about what's happening next. But um, until then, I do talk to you after the cut. All right, here we go. This is the real, uh, because the episode is already pretty long. And that said, there is also not that much to see, okay? So this is the entrance building, as you can see. I, um, as I said, I did a little bit in the live stream. So we have these lovely alleys now uh, guiding towards the entrance, which is also a little bit more classic and a bit more Disney-ish. Um, uh, don't worry about too much about the lake. It will be looking a bit better soon. I will put some rocks down here just to make it more finished. But you can see really trying to go with a bit more of a classical um, Victorian park inspired thing or like English park, you can even call it. And then you come to this building and you, you're just here and you have this wonderful entrance plaza with some like logo in the middle and a bit of a planter, tiny bit overgrown, not too, not too nice and tidy. You have some, some foliage in here blocking a bit of the backstage area and um, yeah, it's just if you, if you go 
go here, you can see there are also a little bit of uh, inclines and uh, some little hills inside here, just what I learned from Mr. Mike uh, Sheets himself to not make it too flat and stuff. And also one thing I wanted to point out, I wasn't able to do in the um, real time part. There's one little trick I used and you can see that the plaza is slightly tilt, like very, very subtle. Um, but the main reason for that is that if you go in, I wanted to have this false perspective a little bit to make this building appear a bit taller than it actually is, to make the tree still be in the center and to make that logo pop a little bit. This is also like how Disney um, itself works with the planters in front of the classical Anaheim entrance. If you look up some pictures, you can definitely tell this. Um, they over-exaggerated that even more. The, the, the station is even sitting on top of a little hill and then you have the, um, the planters lean toward it um, on, the, um, on the incline so that the building appears even more in the center and even more prominent and exposed in the middle um, so that you get this wonderful feeling. But yeah, so this is the entrance and you can go to the left or right and then you have these different entrance booths over here. Um, also, a little little mention to Sylph, he, um, he was helping me a bit out on, on some of the architectural judgment and uh, he gave me some cool insights to the lower supports of the central roof and I changed this to what you have seen in the um, time lapse. These are now a little bit more slick looking, a little bit more nice looking um, support beams in the middle rather than these uh, over exaggerated columns. What is exactly wrong with you? Never mind. Um, now you can see here also some little lanterns hanging down, so some light in the in the dark. We can really tell um, how many details I try to wave into this building. I mean, this looks kind of cool also in the lighting. I'm uh, I'm a little bit of a fan of that, to be honest. I really hope you guys like this as well. As we enter the zoo, there's a tiny bit already of the. Uh, yeah, of the layout done, but this is not set in stone yet. You can really tell this is the different view from the backside. Um, this is going to be the entrance road um, where there will also be like a gate that will the backstage connection. Again, very inspired by theme parks rather than zoos. And then you come to this viewing platform, which is for the first time not centralized. And this is absolutely intentional. I, I was thinking a lot about if I want to make like the perfect circle yeah, um, viewing platform over here. By the way, you can tell here from the uh, roofs, this is very unfortunate as I said already. So this is where the, where the roof comes in. So this is the latest point where you can actually take some screenshots if you want, because everything else is unfortunately then not viewable anymore. But well, um, I wanted to make this platform look a little bit more um, organic because it will be waved in into the overall round shape around the lake rather than being the central point of the main street so I'm also thinking of maybe putting a gazebo here to really make a separation of this area and the and the zoo itself or the, the kind of circular shape itself but let's have a look to this tree because the tree again I'm super proud of it I am super happy with the outcome I mean it's I think it's looking fairly decent for the fact that it's made out of different pieces. Uh, it kind of looks really like uh, these little branches are, or roots, I gotta call, call them, are like waving itself together to make this, uh, to shape this overall tree. Then you have all the animals in here together, like the stream of life a little bit. Um, I just rotated them here so you have an up and down connection. Um, and yeah, trying to really make sure that all the different wood patterns work together. So as you zoom out, it kind of creates this, this more tree-ish look. And while you go closer, you do have that. At the moment, there is still already um, the opportunity to go inside of the tree and have an education board in here. I'm not sure if I will keep this because I got already some feedback in the live stream that people were fearing that this might break the illusion a little bit. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm still a bit confused because if, if not, you still need to have some maintenance of this tree because honestly, it's definitely not a real tree. It would be like a man-made uh, thing that has to be maintained and, and colored and painted and stuff. So I don't know if it would make sense that, you know, the people would always go here by boat. But anyways, this is um, some stuff for the future. And then we have one last thing I wanted to show you guys. There is a dedication in here for Mrs. Beau de Vries, uh, the community, lead community manager still of uh, Planet Zoo, Planet Coast and so on. Uh, who's unfortunately leaving soon, Frontier, as you guys know. And I wanted to give this little dedication because that is the last project I will be starting while she is still in charge of Frontier. And uh, she's done so much great stuff for the community, so I thought it was only fair to put her on one of the main routes of this Tree of Life in Planet Zoo. Because she is part of, you know, the overall growth of the Planet series in, in particular, and Planet Zoo as her 
very own big baby so to say what he what she has been following from the beginning to the release and i think it's it's very important and emotional for her itself so i thought it was only fair to bring in the little dedication here so she will be always part of this project and um, yeah Bo, i really hope if you're watching this uh, that you enjoy this little dedication it's your very own root down here um, you've helped growing that community so it's only fair that you help growing this tree and this park as well but that should be it for the real-time part guys um, i really hope you enjoyed that one and yeah just in general I do hope you enjoyed the overall episode today. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you did enjoy. And also let me know um, if you guys uh, want to see or what you guys want to see in the next couple of episodes. Um, let me know uh, how you would love to see the pr procedure of the next episodes. And also, I really do hope uh, that you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Enjoy your time. See you in the next one. And goodbye. I'm just going to put myself here. Okay? Now, that's really it. Have a wonderful time, guys. Goodbye.